Hello guys and welcome to ZBrush customization tutorial. ZBrush is one of the most customizable pieces of software I've ever seen in my life. You can change colors, you can add custom shortcuts, you can create custom panels and you can do all sorts of crazy things with its UI. So today we're going to go over some of the things that ZBrush lets you do. So uh, if you look at my screen right now, I'm left-handed, so my tool panel is on the left, so it's where my hand would be. And then I have all my most commonly used brushes at the bottom of my screen, so I can easily pick them without having into the brush menu, which is shortcut B, by the way. But yeah, like easily, quickly switch in between brushes. I also have some basic uh, matcaps here and uh, some most commonly used uh, options. And uh, if you look at it, you'll be wondering why the hell I would have like a replay last here and an array mesh right next to it. And basically the way I've been building, the way I've been using ZBrush is that I was building my UI as I go, uh, depending on a task I'm, I'm, I'm working on. So, you know, one day I, I'm working on you know on morph targets and I'm storing a lot of stuff and then I'm you know painting painting out uh, parts of the sculpt so I added a uh, store morph target delete, delete morph target and switch to my UI this way every time I want to switch back and forth I don't have to go down and scroll through the tool palette people like to complain about ZBrush's UI because um, you know, there's a lot of scrolling involved and that type of, type of stuff. But uh, from my experience, people who don't understand the, the ZBrush UI simply didn't get to the point where they created their own uh, version of it or they customized it to fit their needs. But basically the way Pixelogic approach this is they're giving you Lego pieces and you, you build, build your own thing uh, that fits exactly your workflow. In my opinion, it's a much more interesting and flexible approach uh, rather than, you know, giving a software that you have to get used to or kind of adapt to. While ZBrush, yes, there's learning curve and you, you do have to get used to certain things. But at the end of the day, you're not limited by this palette. You don't have to scrub through it. If there's certain features that you want to have on the tip of your hands, just create a custom custom menu like this add all the features and then assign a shortcut to it and suddenly you have this extremely powerful system of of, uh, of menus and, and buttons. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, in the preferences config I'm gonna restore standard UI and this will uh, give me my most standard ZBrush UI and uh, let's start customizing it. Uh, under preferences, I'm going to enable customize and you can see it changes the UI slightly. And then I'm going to, first of all, well, I don't need, I don't want the material tab here. So I'm just going to click on that icon, oh, uh, that little icon here M makes the palettes disappear. So let's, and let's move it to the left because I'm left handed. So by default, the most recent versions of ZBrush started using things called like UI groups, which is these little things that you have to click on in order to open them. Uh, they're great for organizational purposes. They make things appear much more organized, but the re main reason I don't use them is that they add a secondary click to every single option that you want to use. So for example, I want to quickly enable Dynamesh and instead of me going to my sub tool, uh, into my geometry tab and clicking Dynamesh, I have to click on the geometry, then I have to click on Dynamesh, and then I have to click on Dynamesh. And that is, to me, that's extremely annoying. So one of the first things I do, I go ahead and I disable that. Uh, it's UI groups, use UI groups. Boop. And you can see that right now it looks quite messy, but I can go ahead and instantly enable or disable my Dynamesh. Next thing, what else can we do here? Let, let, let's jump into preferences and see, see what, the op uh, what options we have here. There is uh, an option called white buttons. 
And what it does is just it just makes the buttons. You can see they kind of have that landscape uh, uh, proportion to it, and I don't like this because it's it's wasting waste, wasting the space. I like squares, so I'm disabling that. You can also adjust the size of the buttons, which is fine. Uh, I accidentally dragged the slider. Oh well. Sub palette pop up. I'm not sure what it does, but whenever I enable it, it tends to really break my UI, and half of the options go missing. So I'm not gonna bother pressing any of these two buttons. We have right-click navigation, which means if you right-click, it does it gives you this. This feature always seemed to me like uh, more for mouse users. I'm using uh, Cintiq, so whenever I press on empty space, I can orbit around. I don't need to right-click. And then if you zoom down very too close, I tend to use the frame. If you click outside of the fr this frame. It still gives you that freedom for orbiting and rotating. So I tend to disable right-click navigation altogether. And then the rest is kind of just, uh, you know, expose and um, other stuff that doesn't really matter. So we have the custom UI tab. This is where you create your own custom palettes. Colors, I'm not going to go crazy with colors, but basically it lets you go through and adjust the color of each single individual element. Uh, I tend to just stick with defaults because it's nice and dark and has a lot of contrast. Then there is uh, memory, marker, Zscript, import, export, lightbox. Lightbox, you can disable open lightbox at launch. When you launch the ZBrush, it will give you this little pop-up. Uh, you can disable that here. Another feature that I always enable is allow click to solo. But in certain cases, you might not want to have that. So I typically have a little button on the bottom uh, that uh, lets me enable and uh, disable it. So what uh, allow click to solo does, if you enable it, you can just tap gently on a screen to basically isolate the current subtool that you have you're working on. So if I alt click on my eyeballs, you can see I'm switching to my eyeball subtool. And I, if I tap, I can quickly switch between them and uh, easily isolate them. And this lets me work without having to go into sub tool and you know hide and hide stuff or, or press the uh, solo button here. And that's probably about it in terms of options here. Um, you can enable skip history so when you do like an, an auto save, it doesn't save all this uh, the undos, so it's gonna speed up your uh, auto saves. But yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and make sure we have uh, enable customize on. And what this lets us do is with, when you have enable customize enabled, you can go in and uh, grab any any button or any little option. For example, where was that? Uh, uh, allow click to solo there we go you can alt and control click it and you can drag it and place it anywhere you want on your ui and now i can enable it and disable without having to go into this menu you can also get rid of some of the features so for example um i have this material uh, uh selector which lets me switch between matcaps it's great, but it wastes a lot of space, just this giant icon. And if you go into the materials tab, you can see we have much smaller ones here that do exact, like that let you switch between material presets as well. So what we can do is we alt control drag this guy and we li literally just drop it onto empty space of the canvas and it will remove it from here. And now if we go to this, the material tab, we can grab Okay, let's grab a skin shade, let's grab a matcap red, uh, basic material, and maybe, like, I want I want to grab the flat material, so I'm just gonna gr grab the flat color, and now we can see I have a flat color. And I'm gonna drag it in here, align it slightly better. And if, if, if you, okay, there we go, just nudged it a little bit. So now you can see I can switch between four materials, and if I click on it, I still can pick whatever material I want and uh, it just makes it so much easier than you know wasting your space on this one large giant button 
Now, brushes. How do we add more brushes? And like, let's move allow click to solo kind of below because it's not an important feature. Brushes are more important. So let's uh, go to the brush tab, dock it over, over there on the right. And let's grab move brush because move brushes, I use it a lot. Uh, let's grab trim dynamic. Trim dynamic is great. And you can like space them up, out a bit if you want. Kind of create groups. Masking brushes, piece of their uh, of its own. Let's put them on kind of on the right. Hey, I don't use expose. I don't really need it. Get rid of it. So so you can see very quickly we're starting to customize it and you know turn it into something that that something that would very speed up our process very much. That's really cool. It, these options let you add things to your UI, but. There's a lot of options in ZBrush and you're not going to be able to fit all of these options onto this tiny screen and like the smaller your screen is, the higher chances that you want all these options kind of organized but not directly in your face. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go to preferences and I'm going to move, move this here and we're going to go custom UI. You can see there's um, uh, create new menu button which will create a new menu and then there is this U UI fillers and what these do They're kind of just like a uh, spacers. Let's create a new menu first actually. So call it um, Tutorial menu I pressed enter and the thing you'll notice is that tutorial menu showed up right here and uh, it also moved itself to align with other elements in alphabetical order so transform tutorial menu and if I click on it, you can see there's there's really nothing in there. So let's grab the tutorial menu and put it on the side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add let's let's add uh, some I don't want material. Let's add our subdivision levels here. We want a big divide button because divide button is important. We're gonna have a subdivision slider so we can switch between subdivisions. And I want lower res and nah, actually no, I don't want lower res and high res because I ha already have a slider, so it doesn't matter to me. I don't want the dedicated buttons for this. We can add a smooth button because sometimes I want to subdivide without smoothing. So this is cool. And then now that we know how to divide, let's add a little break. So that's where I'm gonna grab a divider and I'll use this guy once again. Alt and Control to to move it around. And now that I have a little break, I'm gonna add my dynamic options. To do that, I'll move my tool palette uh, on over there. And let's see, where's my dynamesh? There it go. So dynamesh. And uh, adding it here, once again, adjusting my divider. And then we want, basically I just want all of these features really. So groups, out of like clay polish. And then blur, sure. Just quickly dragging it and adding a resolution slider. All right, so this is cool. Just for fun, let's add something completely random. So I'm gonna add another divider, and we can add I don't know. Maybe maybe a brush selector to kind of illustrate that you can do a lot of a lot of a lot of really custom stuff with this. So now that I have this menu enabled, how do we launch it? This is kind of lame. We don't want to be clicking on this. You can assign shortcut to anything in ZBrush by Alt and Control clicking. You want to go to your preferences and disable customize because we are done customizing. Now if I Alt and Control click and press on the shortcut I want to assign this palette to. And in my case I'm just going to use a, a slash. It tells me that hotkey is already assigned, which is fine. Okay, so I rewrote the hotkey and now whenever I press slash, you can see we have our menu. And it pops up exactly where my mouse is. I don't have to scroll through any of this, uh, all these options because I don't care about them. All I need is this. And what I tend to do is I have one menu for my very basic stuff and then a secondary menu that 
uses a slightly different shortcut for very specific tasks, or maybe for Z modeler, or maybe for hard surface menu and, uh, and uh, organic sculpting menu. And this lets me really quickly go through day-to-day -day ZBrush activities without having to use an entire keyboard like a piano or having to scrub through the palette. Now, so you created the menu. I guess the last question is how do you, how do you save all this? First, before I save it, I don't want this leftovers that I used to design my stuff. So I'm gonna move it here. That's where I want my tool palette to be. I'll collapse this. And now let's go to preferences. We can store the hotkeys, either save or st store. Yeah, so when you press store, it will restart every time you start ZBrush. When you save it, it'll save them to a file. And um, with the UI, basically store config will store it. So next time you launch ZBrush, it's gonna be there. And save UI will let you save it to the file. So you can see this is my the custom user interface that I use uh, on day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I'm, I'll, I will make sure that I will upload the file for you guys to play with as well. I'm not gonna rewrite it. I'm just gonna call this tutorial. Uh, tutorial UI, press save. I can also store config. And now if I restart ZBrush, it's gonna reload this and I'm gonna do this in a sec just to illustrate. I didn't go much into colors. I like to use the default UI colors. You can switch between presets using these buttons and then you can st store this as well when you press store config. Another thing that I disable right off the bat is background range. By default ZBrush has this high contrast gradient that I absolutely hate and it makes things really hard to look at so moving it to zero and then save as a startup doc. And this, this way, whenever you start ZBrush, it's gonna be, there's not gonna be any gradient. And you can also, by the way, you know, adjust the resolution to make sure that it fits your screen right here. All right, so now that the doc is stored, uh, store config just in case, let's restart ZBrush. And we restarted it. You notice I didn't save the startup doc. So I have the gradient, but whatever. All my UI is still here. My shortcuts are here, so I can select the brushes and uh, use my custom options that I created here. One more thing to mention before I go. If you have multiple UIs, you can load UI. That's how you would load uh, my file, for example. And then you just double click and come back to my default, default interface layout. The only thing to keep in mind is that your custom hotkeys and your UI are being stored in different files. So right now my hotkeys got reset, so I have to re-establish them by alt Control clicking on the item and pressing the button, overriding alt Control clicking my second menu. Now going into preferences and making sure to store the hotkeys configuration and now I'm back to my custom UI. All right, that's all I have. And uh, thanks a lot once again. And see you in the next video. Bye bye.